this is my guitar, not Tom. Today he's, he's going to talk about a kind of conversation within Google e-commerce. And this time for us, it let's join me to welcome him. Thanks, uh, Marmin, right? Yeah, thanks, Marmin, for the uh, introduction. All right, uh, welcome everyone to the uh, WordCamp Bangkok 2019. Uh, so let me get going. So today what we're going to talk about uh, in, in, in uh, this session, right, is going to be on the five key uh, WooCommerce metrics, right, to help you to skyrocket your earnings. So before I get going, can I have uh, understanding, right, how many of you run a WooCommerce store here? And okay, and how many of you run an agency that manages other people's WooCommerce store here? Okay, awesome. So we've got a good number here. So today, what I'm going to share with you these key metrics are really going to help you to either yourself or your client to uh, you know really increase uh, their profit, right? So we are not talking about the revenue here. Because revenue, that's saying that you know revenue is vanity, right? But actually, profit is what pays us, and that's what we, uh, that's what's the most important to us. And uh, the five key metrics over here. Okay. Uh, before you guys take like notes and photos, I just want to let you know that I will be sharing the slides. Uh, you guys can download it later on. Uh, at the end of my presentation. So I hope that most of you would actually stay focused and try to understand because what I'm going to share with you will really, really help you if you just work on it uh, right after today, right? And, and you, know, you can see results within like a week. Okay, so the first one is we're going to talk about is conversion rate, okay? And the second one is abandoned card recovery. Number three is uh, average order value average profit margin as well as the last one is the customer lifetime value. So these are five key metrics. And no worries if you do not understand uh, later on the slides, I'm going to share with you what are these metrics. What are you uh, looking at? What are these numbers? So some of the tips to improve all metrics at very low cost, these are the three uh, tips. Number one is to increase your sales, right? So if you have more sales, you'll be making more money. Number two is to have a bigger cut value and also by having customer return to your store again. So a bit about myself, right? This is me, Henry, and uh, I've been in five years, probably six years now in e-commerce and I've sold on multiple different e-commerce platforms uh, such as Amazon, eBay. Cool then, guys welcome, thanks for joining our session. Uh, Amazon, eBay, like Kuten, Lazada, Carousel, Shopee, right, and also the most importantly is uh, WooCommerce, right, and uh, that's what uh, I, I learned about uh, with WordPress as well as uh, WooCommerce, and I run a five, seven figures company uh, in Singapore with close to 20 people on, on my team, and honestly I'm just a regular guy, and Right. The the thing is that you know I just really love e-commerce and I could just talk about it all day, right? So maybe the next webcam we can have just me talking about <laughs> like just one room talk, uh, talking about WooCommerce. Yeah, just kidding. So why WooCommerce uh, at WordPress? Because it's free, it's open source, right? By being free and open source, you know everybody contributes to this community. That's why I love it. And uh, it's easy to install, easy to set it up, right? There's, there's probably you know a plugin out there. Like if you want a certain feature on your website, on your e-commerce store, there, there's all, there's probably a plugin out there that that does that function, right? So using WordPress, so much really, right? So uh, conversion rate. So what's conversion rate? Is basically uh, how many people comes to your website and how many people actually check out and pay for the item. So let's say you have 100 people coming to your website, you have one person buying from you and that is a 1% conversion rate. Okay, everybody understands this? Okay, so 
Uh, what is the high conversion rate? So high conversion rate means that the website is, uh, you know, in terms of the design, in terms of uh, the whole customer experience on the website, uh, people are going to where they are going to. So you are you are sending them to your product pages, and you're sending them to the checkout page, uh, the, sorry, the cart page, and then the checkout page. So that's an indicative of high conversion rate. And what is the uh, like uh, market? Conversion rate. Uh, I would say that is based on my experience is roughly about two percent. So if you have fifty people coming into your website, you should expect one sale, right? So that's a. I would say that is a good conversion rate. But I wouldn't. But it also depends on uh, what you're selling. So if you're selling like a, a expensive product on your website. That conversion rate might go down. Okay, so it depends on the product that you're selling, and uh, of course also the source of the traffic that you're getting from. Okay, so how to improve conversion rate? So there's a lot of uh, stuff over here. I will I will go uh, into them uh, individually later on. Some of the important ones. Okay, so live chat. How many of you have live chat on your website? Okay, so what live chat is is basically a small window on your website, and uh, customers can ask you questions, right? By having that, uh, a, like a real person there talking to your customers, that will improve the, that will create more trust, right? And that will increase your conversion rate. And the second one is what we call an exit intent pop up, which I believe a lot of you might have come across this when you try to exit on a website, something pops up, okay? Number three is the urgency and scarcity. So uh, I realize that a lot of people do not do this on your website. Okay, urgency and scarcity. That means that uh, you know you have this product here uh, for let's say three dollars or uh, let's say like two thousand baht. Okay, and if the customer feels that they can come back. Three days later, and still get the same price. There's no urgency there. There's no scarcity. They they do not. They are not obliged to quickly buy the product and you know uh, check out. Okay. And number four is your web design. Uh, number five is called niching. Niching means that uh, you actually what we call uh, uh, if you are like Amazon, right? So you sell everything, or you are like Lazada. You guys have Lazada here in Thailand, right? Yeah. So you you sell everything, but if you if you niching means that you just sell a particular category of products. So let's say I just sell furniture on my website, or I sell like uh, fashion on my website, or I sell mobile accessories on my website. So niching down will create more trust in your customer, and that would actually help you to uh, increase the conversion rate. Okay, so some of the ones that uh, we can continue is uh, customer testimonials, uh, having free shipping, having competitive pricing. So if people are all selling at two thousand baht and you sell the same product for a thousand nine, then people would would more likely to choose you than buy from somebody else. Uh, having photos, having a high quality photos, maybe a particular product you take multiple shots of the same product. Multiple different angles, having product for uh, videos. So maybe you unbox the product, uh, you show how this product is used. Having more of this content will create more trust in the customers. Number eleven is the FAQ questions. So sometimes your new website people have people have doubts, and having an FAQ question uh, section, right? Uh, what happens is that people go to the FAQ, they want to find out more, like. Uh, what is your shipping rate like? Uh, how much do you charge for shipping? Uh, maybe it's I've ordered like five thousand baht to get free shipping in Thailand, something like that. And sometimes customers do not want to talk to you, like through a live chat or maybe a phone call. They want to self help, right? And this FAQ session will serve this group of customers. This group of visitors on the website. Number eleven is having your having a business address, having some contact information to show that you are a legitimate business. 
Number 13 is having branded content. That means, uh, how many of you know that, like, because uh, some people actually do not play too much with WooCommerce, right? Is that you can customize the emails that are going out to the customers, like your order confirmation email, uh, things like that. So you can insert the logo, you can put your brand color on it, right? This will improve uh, the, the trust that you have with the customer. And 14 is having fast load speed. So if your site looks very slow, you know, it doesn't, uh, people don't have the time to wait, right? So if it takes like eight seconds to load one page, okay, let's say that's really slow, right? So eight seconds, and I just want to buy a product and I know where it is. I go to the home page, I go to the category page, I go to the product page, I go to the card page. I go to the checkout page. That will take me like 40, se 40 seconds, right? Assuming that I click everything very quickly and I, I don't have to look at the, pro the product information. But if you shave that down to like two seconds, that will be 10 seconds. So the increase in your cycle speed, right? Increases the, what we call is the increase in the speed of the customer going to check out is exponential okay and number 15 is SEO so if people search for uh, what do you call it like a hairband right and you are the one ranked number one in Thailand in Bangkok so people are more likely to choose you because people have this idea that you know Google is uh, they are they are sort of like showing you that you are the best result okay so having better SEO will help you to rank, uh, to convert better. Number 16 is to tie up with big brands. So something like McDonald's, right? They, they work with like Disney, they work with Hello Kitty, right? The reason is because they leverage with the other brands out there, okay? And number 17 is having a credible payment gateway like PayPal or Stripe. Number 18 is having some social features like Facebook, uh, share, login, like. This shows that your business is very uh, up to date. You are social, right? Having these features would convey this message to the customer. And number 19 is uh, having some sale and like new arrivals pages on the website. So let's dive deep into some of these factors, okay? Because, as I mentioned a few times, is the trust and reliability of your website, having social proof that people are also buying, like nobody wants to be the first sucker to buy from this website, am I right? right? And uh, the fear of missing out, if everybody's buying a particular product and, uh, you know, I don't want to miss out, right? And the, it clarifies doubts and insecurities, help customers to decide better, uh, the ownership benefit, so let me explain a, more, um, a lot more on this. Ownership benefit means that what is the benefit of me owning this product from the customer point of view? I want to, ex I want to know what is the experience of buying this product. Okay, and how to do that is through using like videos and things like that to show the, and also customer testimonials that will show the benefit of buying this product. Okay. And sending customers to the payment page as soon as possible. So number one live chat is uh, for customers talking to you directly. Uh, some of the plugins that I use, you could use Facebook Messenger, right? And you can also use Talk to. So I'm in the middle of the transition from Talk to over to Facebook Messenger. Because uh, with Facebook Messenger, you could use uh, ManyChat. How many of you know what ManyChat is? ManyChat. So it's like the Facebook chatbot. How many of you use Facebook chatbot? No? Yeah, so you could uh, use like a Facebook chatbot. If customers uh, ask you some uh, questions, you know, you could direct them through a particular uh, chat flow to answer their questions and assist them to buy the product, something like that. So then you do not need a, you do not actually need a live agent to do that. 
right? Part two is uh, actually what I'm using right now, which I'm actually very happy with it. Uh, you could do a lot of features on it. It also allows you to capture certain keywords that uh, trigger certain messages. So if they ask, like, what is the shipping fee? Then I could use shipping fee as the keyword. And what that does is that when people, when that shipping fee keyword appears, a particular message actually goes out to them and answers them, right? But it's not as uh, engaging as using like a chatbot. So which is why I'm actually moving to a platform like uh, Facebook Messenger instead. Right? But top two also requires like live engine. Uh, so this is the downside. So you need to have live agents uh, answering the questions. Okay. And number two is the exit intent pop up. And uh, so what's the, the sorry? Let me move back. So exit intent pop up, right? So there is some of the websites you land on, and then the pop up comes up, right? Exit is actually the more powerful one, right? And the best practice to do this is there is in your website, okay, in your WooCommerce store, right? There will be home pages. And how many of you do content marketing on your website, on your store? Like you write some articles, some blogs on your website, okay? So if you, if, so you would have blog posts as well. We have some pages. Yeah, yeah. So what happens is that. What I'll do is that I will segregate these customers that come to my website. The people who land on your blog pages, what are they looking for? Anyone has any idea? When they land on your blog page, your blog post, anyone has any idea? So you want to give it a try? Okay, no worries. The answer is that they are looking for information. Am I right? They are looking for information. So what do you want to give them? Information, right? And if they go onto your product pages or your card page or your checkout page, what are they looking for? They are looking to buy or they have the intention to buy. Right? So if they try to exit on your website in the blog page, you want to have a pop-up that offers them more information. Right? And then after that you have your email uh, marketing to convert them, right? To buy the product from you because you will educate them about the product. And if they are on your shop page, your product page, cut page, checkout page, this is when you do a pop-up that offers them a discount. Am I right? So this is the best practice. Okay, and how does it help? It helps the customer to rethink uh, in pur purchasing from your website by persuading them to using this kind of freebies and many more. Okay, and the urgent and urgency and scarcity. So urgency means the time limit. This sale is going up to 12 midnight tonight. That is urgency. I have to buy. I have to place my order by tonight. Otherwise, the price goes up. Right? That's urgency. And scarcity is there's only 50 units, and once it's sold out, it's sold out. Right? Either the price goes up or it is out of stock. And what I do with this is uh, how do I create this uh, urgency and scarcity is through this. Plugin that I use is called Finale, so you guys can search for it in the WordPress uh, plugin repository. Okay, uh, it's it's free by the way for the Finale. Uh, just that they, they do have a paid one. Uh, so number four is the conversion optimized web design. So you can have a very nice website, but if it doesn't convert the customers. Right, it, it it doesn't help me to like make more money or something like that. Okay, so you want to have a obvious and centered search box 
but that depends on your website. It depends on what you're selling. So if you only have one product, you do not need a search box, but you have maybe like 30, 40, 50 or more, like 100, 200, 300 or maybe up to the thousands, you want to have a center search box where it's very obvious. Okay, the reason why you want to do that is there's two things. Number one is because when people search for stuff, okay, and compared to, let's say a visitor comes to a website, they search for a particular product, let's say they search for iPhone case, and somebody who comes to your website and they browse your website, which is more likely to buy? The one who search for it. Because they have the intention to know more about this item. Okay, they know what they are looking for. Okay? And the second reason is because when you link your website with Google Analytics, you will have ideas of what people are searching on your website. Okay, so you get that information. So if you have a lot of people searching for a particular term on your website, but there is no uh, you, you don't sell that product, then you might want to consider getting that product onto your website as well because that will bring you more sales, right? So that's why you want to have uh, 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 this uh, search box because every website does this, right? eBay does this, Amazon does this, Lazada does this and there's a reason why they do it because it works for them, right? And the ability to skip to check out quickly, so sometimes instead of having an add to cart button, you change it to a checkout button. So they go direct into the checkout page. Okay? And but that also depends on uh, what you want to achieve with your website. Number four is uh, what we call a distraction free checkout. Distraction free checkout means that your website, the checkout page, right? When you land on the checkout page, there's nothing no navigation at all, no paper, no footer on the website at all, right? Even the logo is not clickable and everything. There's only the checkout fields in there. So you kind of block the customer in the checkout page so that they have to fill it up, otherwise they will not be able to exit. Something like that. Okay, they could click back or close the, the, the window or the tab, but Basically, you do not want the customer to be distracted. You know, they are at the point of paying. So let them pay, let them go through with the payment. And the last one is the uh, most likely adjustable in team settings or, yeah. So this this has to do with the, the destruction fee. That means that you can get somebody to do it for you. So this is something like a uh, destruction fee checkout. There's, uh, uh, there's nothing much on the web page, okay. And niching now, as I mentioned, is is focus, right? The, the website is focused. You just sell what you're supposed to sell. You just sell furniture. You just sell hair. Uh, let's say like hair care products or skincare products, something like that. And it may, you are, you come across more trustworthy because you are an, you are like an expert. You guys are you you, you guys know this uh, particular category of products very well. Okay, and you will also know your customer profile better. You know what kind of customer will buy from you and it's easier to target them. And also it's easier to uh, rank your website with SEO. So number six is the customer testimonials and user-generated content. So uh, what this does is that it has more trust more social credibility, ownership benefit. Uh, so what this is, is customer testimonials uh, is like reviews on your website. Okay, and a very good plugin that does this is called Customer Reviews for WooCommerce. And it's completely free as well, but they do have a paid version. Uh, it, it does a lot of features such as uh, sending out manual review requests. Uh, you can set like automatic review requests as well. You can offer like some kind of coupon or discount to, to the customers to entice them to leave a review for you, right? So it has a lot of features. Uh, this is probably one of the best uh, one that I've tried. So this is how it looks like. Okay, so you can have all your reviews on one single page as well. So 
you can put that maybe in your folder or something like that to give more credibility to your website so if they want to look at previous customers who have bought from you right so this you can do this with these uh, this upper plugin and uh, number seven is uh, the customer support contact number so if you have a a live number that you can call and that would increase your conversion rate by 11 percent right uh, this conversion rate by 11 percent it is the uh, conversion rate of actually i think it's people who actually add the car right it's, it's not like the more people who come into your website and check out yeah by having this number will not increase your sales by 10 times <laughs> so this can help you increase your conversion rate as uh, how live chat customer service helps. So some people do not, uh, like for my website, uh, we, we sell elderly products in Singapore. So we deal with a lot of uh, what we call like uh, middle-aged ladies uh, who have el elderly parents at home. So they are like 40, 50, maybe 60 years old and a lot of them are not uh, they are not very good with like live chat and things like that. Uh, so a lot of time they actually call us. You know, how 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 can I check out on the website? How can I buy from you? So uh, so that's what we do. So something like this uh, this is for the live chat and having branded content, uh, which is branding your emails. So uh, you are designing your emails, uh, having branded packages. So what happens is that you can uh, let's say you have a you know like the iPhone case, the iPhone box, right? So like a white design. So you can actually create your own logo uh, when you pack the items, something like that will give more credibility to your customers. So maybe you can print some logos of your brand onto the box as well. That could be your option to help you to, uh, it also helps with the branding as well. and. Uh, yeah, so this this one has to do with the emails. So you can the call button actually allows you to do that as well already. And number nine is the fast load speed, right? <clears throat> so some of them that I use is uh, Optimize, W3, Tomocash, and Tiny PNG. So uh, this Optimize helps you to uh, what you call that? It shrinks your uh, website. So uh, it, it, it shrinks the code on the website so that it looks, it looks faster. Whereas uh, W3 Total Cache it cache some of the data on the website so that it looks faster. And Tiny PGG reduces the size of your image files. Okay, so how do you, how do you track the load speed? You can use GT metrics as well as Google PageSpeed Insights. Okay. And SEO, uh, so SEO is, is uh, basically ranking, is, is search engine optimization and it helps you to, uh, you basically you rank your website and it gives the idea that Google is giving the endorsement that your website is credible, right? And some of the plugins is uh, use and redirection. So why can I include redirection here? So everybody talks about use and use because when you have an e-commerce website, how many of you like sell maybe computer accessories or mobile accessories, something like that? None of you here? So what happens to these kind of products? You have iPhone 7 and then 8 comes out, X comes out, uh, I don't know what's the next one, XS, XR? Yeah, so what happens is that you still have the listing for the old iPhone, okay? and there will be what we call like some kind of some SEO juice on it, but you do not want to remove the page entirely. So you want to re redirect that page over to your new, which is the new one, which is the iPhone X or XR, XS, which whichever uh, the new one is. Okay. So yeah, Google. <coughs> And editorial and tie up, so like McDonald's, we can partner with like Marvel. Is this Marvel? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, yeah, so basically, uh, let me move back. 
Okay, so you actually borrow the credibility from a stronger brand. Okay, so you could you when you tie up with other brands, you're borrowing their credibility. So if you are, let's say you are unknown, right? Nobody knows about your brand, but you partner with like uh, Hello Kitty or something like that, right? And you are, you, it's an official tie up. You are borrowing the credibility of Hello Kitty. Okay, so it's some sort of like a partnership. Okay, so credible pay, payment gateway. So by having PayPal, you increase your conversion rate by 44%. 44% refers to the, uh, the people on the checkout page and actually checking out, it increases by 44%. Okay, it's not the overall, it's not the, the, the customers who come into your website and you know, you, you, you wouldn't uh, multiply your sales by 40% overnight. Yeah, just by having PayPal. So, uh, and having the top three most popular payment gateway increases your conversion rate by 30%. Okay, and you, I, I don't know what is the top three because it differs with every different country. In Singapore, we use uh, PayPal, uh, there is Stripe as well. You could also use, uh, there's one that I really use, use a lot in, in Singapore, a lot of customers pay uh, is through what we call DBS PayLab. So it's like you just scan the QR code and then you can just transfer money and pay. Okay, so I, I believe Thailand should have something like that as well. So you want to make sure you have some of the top payment gateways on the website and some of the social features okay it shows that you're up to date uh, like Facebook and Google login Facebook pages Instagram profile uh, share buttons as well so if you have a lot of people on your website yeah so if you have a lot of people on your Instagram page and uh, yeah that would help Okay, so I have to move a bit faster. Sorry. Yeah, so having still and new arrivals, this uh, is having some badges on your website. It, it's like chef recommendation when you are looking through a menu. Okay. And then uh, having an FAQ section, it, uh, as I mentioned, it helps to answer some of customers' questions. And abandoned card recovery, this is uh, a very important uh, feature that you need to have in your website. Is when they, when customers add items to your their card, but they do not check out. So abandoned card would try and get the customer to come back to your website to complete the purchase. Okay, and what I use is, uh, this is an example of how uh, it looks like. This is one of my emails that we send out to our customers. Okay, so, uh, so one very good plugin that I use is uh, Clavio. Clavio is very is, is probably the best for e-commerce and retargeting, right? So retargeting that means when customer come onto your website and they leave without buying or uh, without buying, you show advertisements to them to get them to come back. And how it looks like is uh, yeah. So I don't know who you are, but you've been to my site. Right, so I will find you and retarget you. So how it looks like like this. So come, the person comes to their web, the website, they are tracked, and then uh, the Facebook shows ads or Google shows ads to them, and then they click on the ad, they go back to the website. And the average order value, okay, so the next metric is average order value. So this is important because by having every customer pay more on your website, you will make more money. Okay, and how is it calculated is the uh, using your revenue divided by the number of orders you get. Okay, and uh, how do you increase this uh, this average order value is through upsells, cross sells, niching down. Because if your whole website is only selling, uh, let's say iPhone accessories, then if I buy a case, I'm also very likely to buy like uh, iPhone. Uh, what is it called? I ear pods or something like that, you know, or, or like the iPhone cable, charging cable, something like that. Uh, having a wider range of uh, related products, uh, one click upsells. One click upsells means that once they check out, you, offer, you give them an offer, they can click on that, and 
you will add, they will charge them uh, directly. Okay, so if you are not sure, you can uh, look up on this. And what time offers sale products? Free shipping above and certain amount. So uh, let's say if you sell T-shirts for let's say uh, three dollars and you put the free shipping as thirty-five dollars, so a lot of people will actually buy two and check out. And having checkout options, so checkout options is like they can add on, maybe they want some kind of gift wrapping uh, uh, service, you can add like $5, something like that. Okay, so an example is this, right, this is for cross-selling and upselling. so you sell journals and then you can sell pens together, you sell ref refrigerators, you sell a better model of the refrigerator, okay, and this is another one, so you sell you sell hamburgers, but you sell the fries as well. That's cross selling. Upselling is uh, the upgrade to a meal. Okay. And how you do that is in your uh, WooCommerce call button itself, right? You can do that in the product page. And some plugins to boost your AOV is uh, Upstroke, right? This is a paid plugin. WooCommerce checkout add-ons. Uh, this is a paid plugin from uh, Automatic and uh, smart offers this is a pop-up uh, one-time offer at your cart or uh, product pages okay and the average product profit margin so how much margin do you make on average per sale and to calculate that you use the overall profit divided by the overall revenue so by knowing okay so how do you increase why, why is this metric important to us because by knowing the average profit margin, I will know how much I will make on every sale of my website. Right? And with that number, then I will get the profit per customer. Okay? And when I run ads, I just need to make sure that my cost of acquisition cost of acquisition for each customer is lower than the profit that I get. Right? And how do you do that? You reduce the shipping cost with, from the supplier to you, from the the shipping to the customer, uh, reduce the cost of inventory, reduce payment gateway fees, reduce advertising costs, optimizing your manpower and team, reduce other fixed and uh, running costs. And the average profit per sale is uh, is uh, using the average order value multiplied by the average profit margin. So this is the number that we get per sale. And the last one is this is the last metric, which is the customer lifetime value. This is to predict, you know, how long is this customer going to stay with us? So if they're going to stay with us for two years and they place 24 orders over the two years period, how much money do I make from each of them? Okay? So that is calculated through using the, uh, let's say you can use a 12 month period and then uh, what's the overall profit divided by the number of customers who actually bought more than one time? Okay, and to do that, you can use uh, this plugin called customer, uh, WooCommerce Customer History. This is from Automatic as well. Uh, you have this uh, red olive. Okay, I've not really used this one before. Okay, so this uh, customer history will show you everything that the customer has ever bought from you. Okay, and to increase this, uh, you want to keep the customer as long as possible with you. And how you do that is through email marketing, uh, through running ads with them again, and increasing the AOV. And the last, uh, and, and, the, and this is the most important one. Whatever metrics that I talk about, these five metrics, right, the most important one is your net profit. How much are you really making? So we can talk about all these metrics, but at the end of the day, how much money are you putting into your pocket again? Right? So, Right, so the bonus uh, we'll talk about is the email marketing. So email marketing can help you to achieve an increase in all these different metrics. Right, increasing your conversion rate, increasing your AOV, increasing your customer lifetime value. Right, and how you do that is through this uh, plugin that I mentioned again, uh, Clavio. So these are some of the emails that you want, which is the welcome series. Right. So, how do you welcome customers? So, once they create an account on your website, how do you or, or leave their email with you? How do you welcome them? What kind of information do you want to send it to them? And abandoned card emails. 
Okay, so my best practice is I'll send the first email goes out on the first asking them for reviews and we back email. So these are customers who have uh, bought from you but they disappeared for quite some time. So you want to send these out these emails out to them. And so this is like how an email uh, will look like. We miss you, uh, come back, we're giving you a discount. Okay, and some tips is uh, having the two sign up forms as I mentioned. Right, one is a content, one is a discount, first purchase discount. And you might also want to get them to subscribe to your social media pages. Right, that will make sure that they actually see your, uh, see your company's uh, branding. And uh, so this is one of the way back emails. So the last one is, uh, that's, uh, basically this is my whole presentation. Right? <laughs> Sorry, I was rushing for time. Yeah, so you guys can download the slides here, okay? Oops, sorry. Yeah, so you guys can download the slides here uh, by scanning the QR code, and then uh, you guys can connect with me as well uh, on my website, on my Facebook and Twitter. I, I I'm done actually, <laughs> but I'm not sure if, if they have uh, any questions. I don't know we have time for questions. Just reach out to me through my social media, right? Thank you. Thank you.